Hey what's up guys, OSG here and this time we're going to be checking out the worst movie based games on the C64. I thought it only fitting to do the worst list straight after the best list that I did last week. And let's face it, some of those games weren't even good, so as you would expect there's some real crap here. Like I said in the previous video, there was something alluring to a young kid when it came to movie based games, and the games in this list are the source of a lot of the most let down moments of the C64 years. Ok so sit back, relax and feast your eyes on what I would consider the 20 worst Commodore 64 movie based games from bad to worse. So let's kick it off with Predator 2 in 20th place. Predator was a great film but Predator 2 never did it for me, probably because Arnie wasn't in it. And this game was as big a letdown as the movie. It's a kind of Operation Wolf meets Cabal style game, but is nowhere near as good as those two games. In short, it's a total ball fest. In 19th position we have Return of a Jedi. Obviously the movie was massive and it spawned a full range of arcade and home ports. This is the worst out of all the Star Wars franchise on the system. It's very fiddly to play and that results in a really hard frustrating game that isn't any fun at all. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom takes 18th place. Again, massive film based game, let down by poor execution. This was one of my favourite arcade games at the time. I loved the minecart section, but the C64 game is slow, annoying and ultimately boring to play. Seventeenth place is taken by James Bond. This was one of the first Bond games and it's also one of the worst. The graphics are horrible, the sound is not much better either. I mean, it says James Bond, but it really could have been called anything, as the James Bond tie-in is vague to say the least. In 16th place is Cobra. Now Cobra is weird because the music is brilliant. Sadly though, the game is awful. Cobra looks more like Roy Orbison than Sly Stallone. The gameplay is relentlessly terrible until you either give up or smash your joystick. The Spectrum version though is very good. Ghostbusters 2 was in 15th position. Now Ghostbusters 1 was on the best list, but this sequel never brought any of the film charm to the game. What you get in this game is three levels that are based on the movie. Whilst it's not the worst looking game, it just doesn't do it for me, and I wanted to like this so badly as I love the movie. Fourteenth place is taken by A View to a Kill, Defo the worst Bond game on the system. It's just so disjointed between game styles, and the car section is one of the worst looking and playing I've ever experienced. Music isn't bad, but then again it isn't great either. If you want to play a Bond game on the C64, go and play License to Kill, it's miles better. D 
Days of Thunder is in 13th position. This is another film that I loved and watched so many times. The game, as you will expect, is a NASCAR game, but one with no sense of speed or even car control for that matter. The switching scenes as you turn the corners is woeful, and the sound is pants too. Twelfth place is taken by Red Heat. Now this game will be on most people's worst movie based games list no matter what system they were thinking of. The Schwarzenegger Belushi film was a great action comedy but this game was crap. The graphics were actually the best thing about the game and it's like a side on beat em up from the waist up. I bought this crap and never finished the first level as it was so poor. In 11th place is maybe the best 80s movie ever and that's Back to the Future. This game had very big shoes to fill and didn't come close. You play the part of Marty McFly trying to get back to 1985. However, the whole game seems to take place around getting your mum and dad to meet. A bit of a waste of a great plot if you ask me. But at least we get a glimpse of the DeLorean at the end. Top Gun is in 10th place, and this is the worst game that came with a Hollywood pack. Yes, even worse than Miami Vice, and that's saying something. It's a flight sim that is just no fun to play. The intro screen lured me in with some nice colours and music, but then, when the game started I was met with what can only be described as a Pong did a flight sim. Ninth place is taken by Moonwalker. Again, this is one of my favourite arcades, but when I got this I was so annoyed as it's nothing like that game. The first level which I never got off was more like an early Grand Theft Auto game with no cars and no fun either for that matter. The music is a bad track, which isn't too bad, but the constant looping gets annoying. In 8th position we have Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and what a total letdown this game was. Its graphics looked like a picture that a kid would bring home from school, that you would never ever guess what it was. And the gameplay isn't much better either. The voice sample is pretty cool though. Excellent! The Evil Dead is in 7th place. Cult horror classic turned into a diabolical game. If you're going to do the horror genre, then at least try to have some scares. The sound effects are woeful, and the scrolling is like a broken roller bind that only goes up in sections. This is defo a game to avoid like a zombie. In 6th place we have The Running Man. Arnie was massive in the late 80s and every movie he did was an instant box office hit but The Running Man game was dire. To be honest it's not the worst looking game but the gameplay is boring and the music is like torture to the ears. Again this movie was perfect to be made into a game but the execution was poor. Fifth position was taken by Willow, another much watched and loved movie here for me, and also one of my favourite arcade games. Well as you can see here, it's nothing like the arcade. Instead of a great action platform game, we are trekked to what can only be described as a really poor adventure game. Avoid like the plague, unless you're a glutton for punishment. B 
Big Trouble in Little China takes fourth place, and this is one of the biggest letdowns for me on the list. If I had a pound for every time I'd watch this movie, well I'd be pretty well off. It was, and still is, one of my favourite <coughs> films, but this game is lacking in everything that made the film great. When you think about it, this movie was perfect for a conversion into the game with the multiple bosses. Unfortunately, Electric Dreams just didn't pull it off. In third place is Return to Oz. This game is that bad that even the coder Paul Rogers said it was done purely for financial gain. It was his first game and he went on to do some pretty decent games like Swerve and Time Soldier. Oh well, we all had to start somewhere and although this is utter crap, he redeemed himself with them games. Next in second place is Dick Tracy. This game was a tie-in from the Warren Beatty movie, but it was sadly even worse than Madonna's acting. And let me tell you, that was bad. The graphics are more like a Vic 20, the music is boring, and the gameplay is atrocious. It's a pity, as Dick Tracy had a pretty good outing on the Mega Drive, but not on the C64. Right, so in first place is the ultimate turkey, Highlander. The Christopher Lambert movie is a cult classic, but this game is as bad as Sean Connery's portrayal of a Spanish immortal in the film. The game is slow, pointless, and is not only the worst movie-based game on the system, but a strong contender for the worst on any system. Its only saving grace is that the music is okay. Okay, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what your worst movie-based games were. And if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great network content. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.